guys, welcome back to Just an Ordinary Girl. Tonight we're going to go ahead and make some potato dumplings. And here I've already started washing my potatoes. So you need about three yams and or sweet potatoes. And then get yourself about three um, of the golden Yukons. You can use other potatoes, but I like the, the Yukons. And we're going to wash those up. And we're going to peel them. And then we're going to cut them into small little chunks so to make fly cubed up. And I'm mixing them together. There's the um, Yukons and the sweet potatoes. And I'm going to mix them together and cover them with water and go ahead and start to cook them on the stove. You just have to cover the water over top of your potatoes. Put them on the stove and they're going to go ahead and start cooking. I have, um, I did the white and the orange potatoes together and you just want to cover them and I have it on high to start but we'll see um, after a little while you'll lower the heat because you don't want the water to rise above your pan and spill over of course so just use your best judgment and go ahead and cook them we're gonna cook them until they're soft probably 20 minutes okay the next thing you're gonna want to do is cut an onion and you're going to want to saute this. This is for the dumplings. So go ahead and do that. Okay, your potatoes should be boiling and you want to go ahead and lower the heat. I turned mine down to about six. In the meantime, you're going to go ahead and cut some onions and we're going to get those ready for sauteing. Okay, now here's some onions that are cut. Um, this is going to be for sauteing. Now how do you do that without butter? You might ask. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to add some water to our pan. Just a little bit. And when you go like this, you'll see the water. Let's see if you can see it over here in the light a little better. That's all about all the water you want. You saw what I put in there. Now you're gonna go ahead and put that on your stove and get that cooking. You might wanna go ahead and put a lid on top of there. Yes, go ahead and put a lid on top. And um, this will take about 10 minutes for the onions. Okay guys, now this um, is almost done. We've been on for about 20 minutes. I think this is going to take about another 5-10 minutes to boil and we're trying to get their, our onions sauteing back here and they haven't really started yet, but they will, so we'll be back. Okay, now your potatoes should be done and um, your onions are starting to get translucent, which we want, so go ahead and take those off and we're going to strain them. Okay, now as these are um, draining. We're going to go ahead and fill the pot back up with water. And you're going to, going to want to put your pot of water back up on high or close to high. Put it up on high. <laughs> okay, our next step is we're going to make, uh, let's go with four flax eggs. And here's how you make that. I'll uh, show you. Okay, so it's one tablespoon of flaxseed meal to three tablespoons of water. And you let it sit for about five minutes. Okay, now to put the potatoes together, we're gonna go ahead and take the potatoes. We're gonna go ahead and dump them into our egg mixture along with our onions. We used about a cup of onions, give or take. And then we're going to also add in two thirds cups of breadcrumbs. And um, if you don't know how to make homemade breadcrumbs, that'll also be up on my channel. So look for that recipe video. And then we're going to add about a cup of flour to start. Okay, now I almost forgot. Um, I put in the eggs are in the bottom, flax eggs, and the potatoes, and the onions. And now we gotta mash this. So what I'm using is a pastry masher or potato masher, you can call it either one. I'm just gonna go ahead and mash the potatoes. If you don't have that, if you have an immersion blender, you can use that, or even a, a mixer, stand mixer, you could try that too. Go ahead and mash your potatoes up. 
Okay, now once you get your potatoes mashed, go ahead and add your two-thirds cups of um, your seasoned breadcrumbs. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some nutmeg. Get it open here. Go ahead and sprinkle that on top. And then we're gonna go ahead and add about a cup of flour. Okay, I'm using the whole white wheat flour, but you can add what you, what kind of flour you have, all purpose, I would say. And then we're gonna go ahead and mix this up too. Okay, so I just went ahead and added two thirds more cups of your breadcrumbs in there because it's not quite to the consistency that, um, that I like so go ahead and do that and um, mix this up and then I think we're gonna go ahead and add um, some more flour but I'll come back okay now I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt and pepper for more flavoring I just don't think it has enough a little bit of salt and then we're gonna add a little more nutmeg now we're gonna add in I say let's go with about three quarter cups of flour more. We're going to add that in and we'll stir this up and come back. Okay, next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your your mixture and you're going to go ahead and put it in a, in a ball. You're going to make a ball out of it. This is kind of, kind of um, sticky yet. And then this will get dumped, um, dropped into your um, hot water. Okay, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to um, stop right here. Now I'm going to take these um, three balls and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it into our boiling water. Um, probably want to do, you can probably do three at a time, just go real carefully. They're sticky, sort of sticky. Just very carefully drop them in and we're gonna go ahead and let them cook. Now, you see they're rolling around in there, but they will sort of come to the top. When you kind of see them coming to the top, they're probably done. You wanna get them uh, in a consistency where they're um, sort of stiff. And if you find that you have any difficulty making the um, regular balls, you can always try to make the balls and then put them into your, pop them into your refrigerator for, um, you know, a half hour or something just to cool them off and then um, bring them out, you know, and do it this way. But you see how they're starting to float? Let them in there for a little while. I'd say mm, eight minutes, maybe five to eight minutes. And I have a little ladle and I can kind of show you, see how they get into a ball. This is about the size you want them. You want to make sure they're cooked thoroughly though, because you don't want to eat raw flour because you could get sick. So just make sure that they're cooked. I have one here that I tried and uh, you'll see what they are going to be like. So what you're going to do is once they once they boiled then you're going to go ahead and take some of your breadcrumbs and some of your onions that you have and um, if you don't have enough you can make more onions I might have to make some more but then you're just going to put it on top and you'll see it's still a little um, tender but mm, they're very very good very tasty let's keep watching them They don't float like a regular dumpling does. It doesn't seem like it, probably because they're so heavy. But um, they're starting to come up more to the top. 
You see how they're coming up and then they're going back down? I would say these are done. Let's go ahead and pull them out. And I'll have to get a plate to put them on. Okay guys, here you go. This is your German potato dumplings. Don't they look good? They're ready. So you just add your breadcrumbs and a little bit of your sautéed onions on top. And they're ready to go. That's a side dish. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you liked this little video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe for more videos. Hi right, guys, so after you um, get your German balls, your German potato balls um, in the boiling water and you've cooked them, they take about eight minutes. They will float to the top. Then um, what I did was I had them on these plates here, but you see all the water that's on them. So what I decided to do was um, get my parchment paper pan and flip them upside down. So this is the bottom of them. This is the tops of the balls, see? Just flip them upside down like that. And just kind of throw them in the refrigerator so they'll absorb all that water. Because as they're absorbing the water, they um, sort of stiffen up. Just a tip for you guys if you want, unless you eat them all. If you eat them all on the same day, maybe you have a big family, then that's fine. But us, we just two people and we didn't eat very many. They make about 27 to 28 balls. So, um, you know, go ahead and flip them upside down on your, you know, your cookie tray. And um, put it in a refrigerator, I'd say. Let it absorb that water. And then from there you can pack them you know you might want to put them single layer in a um, in a ziploc bag that's how i would freeze them or fr refrigerate them you can do both i would assume because it's just flour and stuff and it's already cooked so um you could freeze them if you want some for another meal but i just thought i'd add that tip in there okay hopefully you'll like this little tip. I just want to say they've been in for an hour now and you can see they're ready now to be packaged into um, some freezer bags. So here they go and this is how they look after they've been packed. And um, I think they'd be good put just put it in the refrigerator until you're ready for more.